Hello and welcome to another .py Python video tutorial. This is the third video of a three-part series on the Python tool Super. So already in the first couple of videos we've been through what Super does and how it works, which is um, a tool that lets us pass methods from a superclass into a subclass. And so far we have just dealt with single superclasses passing methods to single subclasses. And that's what we call um, single inheritance. And there's a good chance that that's all you'll need to use super for. But if you're interested in some extra credit, this video is going to be focused on multiple inheritance, which might be where you have a scenario with multiple superclasses that all pass methods to a single subclass. And it may be that those superclasses are also passing methods to each other. So it can get quite, quite complicated. Um, so we'll be going through multiple inheritance in this tutorial, and I'll also be um, describing something that I haven't touched on yet in the series, which is Python's multiple, uh, sorry, Python's method resolution order, and that's really important to understand if we start using super with multiple inheritance. Basically, Python's method resolution order comes into play if we have this whole suite of interconnected superclasses that are all passing methods to each other and then passing methods to subclasses. If we want to grab a method from that interconnected mess of classes, what we'd do is we'd use super to search for that method by name and Python will go through all the connected classes until it finds the name of the method that you're after. And the order that Python will go through class by class until it finds the method is, the, is Python's method resolution order. And that's really important to understand, especially when in your connected set of classes you might have methods that have the same name but do different things. So when you search for a method by name and Python goes through those classes um, in its order, the first one it finds is the one it's going to use. So we have to be aware of that and um, have to work around that, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So, without further ado, um, we'll start this by doing some coding with method resolution order, so we get a bit more familiar with that, and then we'll jump back into super and combine them to do some multiple inheritance examples. So, in this first cell on the left, I've got some code with three classes, and I'll add a diagram as well so you can see how the code is written. Class um, first passes methods to the class called second, and second class, uh, the class called second passes methods to third. And you can see that by the black arrows that I've added in the diagram. Um, each class has a single method, and in every case that's the constructor function. And each of the constructor functions just prints the string um, which is the name of the class that it's in. So it's either going to print first, second, or third, and that's just going to help us keep track of which class is being called. Um, underneath where we've defined the functions, I've asked for this print, um, I've asked to print third.mro. What MRO does is it gives us the method resolution order for a specific class in this case, third. Then I've printed a space, and then I've created an object called example, which is created from the class called third. So let's just run that and see what it prints. If I move my face, you can see the first thing it's printed is the method resolution order for third. And so this is a list, and you can see in this list it has the names of the classes that we've defined in our code. And the order of the list basically tells us if I were to go into third and line of code here and ask for a method that is passed down from the superclasses, um, our code is going to look for that method in our superclasses in this order. So we start in third, we ask for a method, it's going to look for it in second. If it can't find the one we're after in second, it's going to look in first. If it can't find it in first, it's going to look in object. And what you might think is interesting is we never define a class called object. But when we create classes in Python, they will always inherit methods from object. One example of this actually is the method resolution order function, 
We never actually define that, but that comes prepackaged when we create a new class because object is like the ultimate superclass, which is passing a set of predefined methods into your class when you create a new class, which is really handy. So let's, um, let's do what I actually just said and call a method of, from a superclass from within a class called third. And also I'll update my diagram. So I've added gray arrows here so you can see the method resolution order that was just printed out. Um, if we ask for a function in third, it's going to look first and second, then third, then object, as we just covered. So I've written super, and I've asked the code to look for the constructor function from our super classes and call that. So it's going to do that before it prints third. If I run that, it's um, now, before third, it's printed second. That's because when it's got to this line of code where it looks for the constructor function, the first place it looks, because it's being called from third, is the class second. So it's looked in second to see, is there a function name that matches the one we're looking for? And there is. So it's called it, and it's printed second. The code never made it to the class first, because it didn't need to. It found what it needed to before it got there. So let's just do a test. Um, let's remove that function in second and just write pass, and now second does nothing. So now when the code looks at second, it shouldn't find what it's after, and it should have to skip one more over in the method resolution order and have a look in first. So if I run that, just as we expected, um, nothing was in second, so it's looked in first, has found what it's after there, and it's printed first. So what about if I wanted to access the methods in first, but I didn't want to have to comment my code out every time, because that's a bit annoying. Well, it is possible, we just have to be a bit more specific about where we start looking in this method resolution order. So, and the place we be more specific is when we call super. So we've been calling super in the default way, where it just starts by looking from the start of this method resolution order every time. But super does actually take two inputs. One of them is self, and that's actually the second input, and that's going to be the same every time. So I'll just write that there. The first input that super takes, let's Python know where you want to start looking in this method resolution order. So we're going to write the name of a class, and we and Python will start looking from one level above that class in the chain. So what I mean by one level above is, in this case, we want to get access to the methods in first. So we're going to say start looking from second, and Python will not look within second, but start looking at one level above it to first. And if it can't find it to first, it will keep looking and it will move on to object. So let's write second in here and run that. So now we get the same output as we had before because we called the first function, uh, first class, but we didn't have to comment out our code in the second, which is good. So now let's move on to another example where before we had this linear shape where classes pass down to subsequent classes. Let's look at an example where we have two independent classes that both pass methods into a class called third. So first and second are independent, as you can see in the diagram. They're both passing methods into third. I've written this in the code as well, like this. And this time, um, because now we're a bit, a bit more familiar with how method, res uh, method resolution order works, I've taken away the print statements, and now this looks a bit more like a code that you'd expect to see, where the constructor functions take in variables and they attach those variables to an object. So the first thing I want to find out is what the method resolution order looks like when we have two independent classes that, aren't, that don't talk to each other. So if I run that, and I'll update my diagram as well, 
with the um, gray arrows, you can see that um, the order's a bit different to what it was before. Now it goes third, first, second object, but there's no splitting off of the method resolution order, even though the classes are split from each other. It's still a single ordered list of where Python's going to look for the method methods that it wants. So using that information, this is a, a good example because in most cases where you have different classes, you're going to want to call all of their constructor functions. And in this case, we have to make sure we get the right ones because the first constructor function um, deals with variables a and b, and the second constructor function deals with c. So I'm going to work through this code and write um, how you call both of them. So I'm going to start with this example object down here. It calls third. I'm just going to specify all three of the variables in here, a, b, and c, and just give them numbers. Then we, this example object gets created in class third, and the constructor function, we'd have to pass in all of those variables too. We'll get rid of pass now. Now let's call separately the first and the second class so we can use their constructor functions on our input variables. So the first variables I want to put through to our superclasses is our A and B. We know they get used in the first class. So if I want to get access to the first class, I look in my method resolution order. And I could actually use super in the default way here because it's the next one after third. So I could just go like that, but um, for consistency, I'll write where to start looking from, which is third. And then ask it to look for the constructor function. So now A and B, oh, I should pass A and B in there. So now A and B are going to be assigned with the constructor function that we wrote in first. Now to deal with C, I'm going to use the constructor function in second. So I have to look back to my method resolution order, say, okay, if I want to use second, I have to start looking from first. So I'm going to write first in here, self is the same the constructor function and pass in the variable c. So now if I run this code, uh, super has, did I miss a space? Ah, I missed the underscores. Whoops. If I run this function, it's printed the method resolution order and now we have this example we have a look at the data attached to it. We have A, B, and C. If we print A, it's 1, B is 2, and C is 3. So we've managed to um, use constructor functions from totally independent classes by just having a look at the method resolution order to make sure we get the right one. So I hope that's been informative and you know a bit more about um, multiple inheritance and Python's method resolution order. And thank you for watching.